All right. Mean wing. We're out here. Figured we'd do just a little quick, quick one today. Explaining Garmin's smartwatch mode. This is the number that, like, you know, everybody looks at when they look at how many days they're. It's the first number that Garmin um, advertises in their battery life numbers. Another quick little note about smartwatch mode, which is interesting, is that it's not a selectable mode within Garmin's ecosystem. So you can't go into your watch settings and just turn on smartwatch mode. Uh, power saver mode, but that's not really what Garmin considers smartwatch mode. <clears throat> so, I mean, what you would really have to do to kind of get to what Garmin considers smartwatch mode is create a custom power profile for your, your watch. Basically, you're shutting off your heart rate, you're shutting off your pulse ox, you're shutting off um, GPS, okay? You're not using any of those features to be able to get Garmin's target in quote-unquote smartwatch mode, even though it's not a selectable mode, which I think is kind of silly to advertise something that's not a mode that you can actually select. It's basically, if you were to take your watch, which is designed for body monitoring and fitness features, and kind of really hinder those features, so heart rate monitoring, activities, all, all that stuff, not doing that. You're basically just connected to your phone with your watch, Bluetooth, and you're just getting updates you know, text messages, all that stuff. You know, it's a metric that Garmin has been using since they added those features. I think the Phoenix 5 probably was the first to do it uh, as kind of their first number that they show you for how long your watch is going gonna, is gonna to last. But if you're like everyone who buys the, these watches, it's not, you're not buying it for smart watch mode. If you really care very little about that. The new AMOLEDs are kind of pushing people to more uh, smartwatch oriented users, more more so interacting with your phone via your watch, but that's not really where the garment space is, or at least as, as I see it. So if you're looking for an AMOLED that get, is going to get the most the max battery life. Just hang on, hanging on. Oh my god, it's cold and windy today. Uh, hanging on to some of the, those features. I honestly think the new Instinct 3 AMOLED Solar that's launching at like I think 450 bucks is an excellent option. That one, I think you're going to get what you're looking for battery life wise. I mean, even the Enduro uh, is good. But you're, I think the Instinct will actually probably get... Oh, jeez, we... Oh my god, it's brutal! Wow! Oh my god, I don't think I can continue even talking about this stuff right now. <laughs> but, uh... That's what Garmin's talking about when they're talking about smartwatch mode, is really kind of dumbing down all the main features that you bought your watch for. Um, I was very tempted to get myself my hands on an Instinct 3 uh, just to do some reviews on that because I think that that's blending a lot of what people want for battery life but also have an AMOLED screen. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm going to pull the trigger on that. So, <laughs> like I'd be buying it just to review it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's my, my little quick one for today. My thoughts on smartwatch mode and why it's not really the best metric for gauging how long you're going to get for your battery when buying a Garmin. <clears throat> anyway, peace. We'll stay out here. We'll keep doing this. As always, like, comment, subscribe.